Now, if you've ever shaped a guitar nut using a disc sander and just holding it with your fingers, you know you're asking for trouble. As well as removing material from the nut, you're probably gonna lose your fingertips as well. Now, one thing I did a couple of years ago was to build this little vise. Uh, it's basically two bits of MDF with some locking nuts super glued in. And basically then using some bolts, I was able to clamp the nut in place between the two and then I could use that to sort of hold up against the disc sander to shape it. But since having a 3D printer, I've been able to improve on this design. So let's have a look at the process that I've gone through. So here's some of the prototyping that I went through. As you can see, I've tried quite a few different variations. And I have no idea which one I started with, but um, you can see on some of these ones, we've got a, a recessed groove in the back, which I'll, um, I'll show you in a moment what that's for. And we've got various curves and various angles on the top. Um, basically, I wanted to match the radius of the fretboard um, or the nut that is, is being shaped. And also to get the angle that the disc sander is set at. And that's to match the break angle of the strings that I'm aiming for. So let's take a look at the final design then. So we basically have two sections that are held together by four um, bolts with locking nuts on the back that are, are recessed, so they're below the surface. Um, there's a washer on the top and a washer in the middle, and this can obviously open and close um, by screwing the, uh, the bolts in. Now, depending on the size of the nut that you are wanting to hold in the vise, you could change the length of the bolts going through and also the number of washers in the middle. So at the top, we've got a 12 inch radius, um, and that is really just to, to match the curve of the fretboard. When I do have a nut in place, it will also be scribed with the, the line that I'll be sanding it to. So really this is just another visual guide to, to help make sure that you're getting a consistent curve. We can see in the middle at the top, there's a little indentation. So that is where the nut will sit in before tightening it. Um, so it will be held in place there. And there's a break angle on the back, which is 15 degrees, which matches the angle that my disc sander um, can be set to. And the bit in the middle, the nut can be placed on the inside and tightened. And that's where the nut can be cut or sanded to length, um, which I'll show you uh, in a moment. Okay, so let's use the vise now to make a new nut for this guitar up here. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is cut the nut to length. Now, um, I think this neck from memory is about a 43 mil um, nut or maybe slightly bigger. What I've done, I've designed the width of this little vise to be 42 millimeters, so a, a standard sort of um, nut or neck width at the nut. So what we can do is put the nut through this gap in the middle and if I, which way are we going to have it? If I put it flush with the space on this side here, and then tighten it up, I now know that I can cut uh, this part of the nut off and I'll just leave a mil or two proud. Um, if I was going to be cutting the nut to 42 mil, I could obviously cut or sand right up to that line there. So now that's secure, I can remove this part here. Now I could go straight to the disc sander um, and it actually probably wouldn't take long to, to sand all that back. Um, but one thing that we can do as well, that since um, I've included this little gap at the bottom, the mini vise can go in a regular vise. And then we can just use a, um, a small saw to cut most of the excess off. So let's just check that the camera can come in a bit closer and we'll cut reasonably close just to get the excess off.
Okay, then we can just clean it up on the disc sander. Now I can obviously tidy the nut up the ends with some small files and sandpaper to get it perfect, um, but this is sort of roughly getting it to the, the length and size that we need. Okay, so let's get this nut out of the guitar and then we'll swap them over and work out um, the height that we're going to need to sand it to. This is getting pretty close now, just sanding it a bit to get it to fit the nut slot. And you can probably hear the air filter running in the background just so I don't uh, breathe in all of this um, bone dust that, uh, that could be floating around. So we're pretty close um, and then we'll, we'll get it in. So we've got a good fit for the nut now and it's cut pretty much to length, which is great. Um, so now we'll use our half pencil to scribe the line that we want to sand down to and then we can use the the mini vise to do that now i've checked the neck um, it is nice and straight which is great um, because it does have a neck access for the the truss rod so i, I didn't really want to have to take the neck off just to, to make sure it's straight So there's the line we want to sand down to and we might uh, come around this side and put the nut in the vise and show you how it works. So time to put it in the vise. We can see the little groove or the notch at the top where the nut will fit in. So if we put that in place, we've got a little bit hanging over each side, which is fine. So we've cut this one about 43 uh, millimeters and the width of the, the vise is 42. So that is perfectly fine for what we want. We'll tighten up all the screws and now that is ready to go on the disc sander to sand it to shape so we can see the curve here um, pretty much matches the the radius of the the curve that we've scribed on so we're at uh, a 12 inch radius um, really it's just a guide you know this curve that i've sort of designed on the top um, just so we know that we're kind of you know sticking to the, the curve that we need so time to go over to the disc sander um, we can see here this is the angle that i've put on so 15 degrees so when i drop the um, the base of the the disc sander down um, we're going to sand a nice uh, break angle for the strings to follow okay let's do that
Okay, so hopefully you can see that I've left it just a little bit above the line. I can obviously sand or fine sand the curve once I get it right, but I've certainly left myself enough room now to cut the string slots um, in the nut. So let's put it in place and see what it looks like. So that looks pretty good to me for roughing it in. We can kind of see the nice curve there. And if we come to the side, we should be able to see the break angle of the nut. Um, excuse the shaky hands. Let's put it in place. Yeah, we can see the break angle of the nut um, going over the headstock of the guitar. So one more benefit of this vise is that we can put the nut back in it and then we can use the vise in a, in a bigger vise um, to do our fine sanding and to also mark and cut um, where the strings are going to go. So I might set that up now um, and do a bit of a time lapse to, uh, to get to that next step. Okay, so I've sanded that curve just a little bit smoother and I've marked and cut the slots for where the strings are gonna go. So the next step is to put the nut back in the guitar and cut those slots to the depth. But I've actually been working on another project to make that a bit easier for me. So you'll have to wait for that one. Now what I've also done as well as this one, which is the 12 inch, I've actually designed and printed a range of mini vices, which will fit different radiuses as well. So I've designed one at seven and a quarter inch radius, nine and a half, the 12 that I've been using, and then the 14. Now I know that I'm not sanding down to the, the curve of the radius, so it really just is a guide, but since you can do it really easily on the 3D printer, I thought, why not? And then I've got another visual guide as well as the pencil mark to get that curve just right for the, the radius that I'm matching. Now, if you'd like to have a go at using these and you've got access to a 3D printer, I've made these files available as free downloads on Colts 3D. So I'll leave a link in the description below and I'd be really keen to get some feedback on what people think about using these. And also on Colts 3D, I've got my fretboard radius jigs available to purchase if you'd like as well. So thanks for watching and I'll see you all next time. Mm -hmm.